day 36 example. Look, first, number one, assign oxidation states to each example or to each element in the compound here in these examples. My math help. Remember my math help. They add up to zero. Why? There's no charge. This is perchloric acid. Okay, so the H, if you go through the, the list, who's first? Um, by itself, non atomic ion, fluorine, oxygen. Oxygen's going to be minus 2. So we get a minus 8 down here. Now, how chlorine likes to be minus 1, doesn't it? So if I write down minus 1 for chlorine, minus 1, that means hydrogen has to be plus 9. That's not going to happen. Hydrogen's either going to be plus one. It can only be plus one. It cannot be any bigger than plus one. Why? Well, hydrogen's one proton. If I have one proton, I can only be plus one. I only have one plus one, so I can't be any more than that. So hydrogen cannot be plus nine. And in fact, in this case, hydrogen is going to be plus one. All right? Because you think be hydrogen. H, just so you know, note. H can either be zero, it can be plus one, or it can be minus one. Those are the only three options for H, because it's one proton. That's it. I can either gain one electron and be minus, right? Because if I gain one electron, I'm 1s2, and it's full valence. It's not going to go to 2s1. I'm not going to do that. H, that's plus one here. That means chlorine can be plus seven. There you go. And, and how do you know that? Because you can separate these guys, can't we? H plus and ClO4 minus. You can always separate them and do the ions individually. Phosphate. Math help. We add up to minus 3. So we go through. We have oxygen. Oxygen is minus 2. And there's four of them, so that's a minus 8. So what does phosphorus have to be? Plus five. Okay. Here's another analogy with instead of ClO3 minus for chlorate, this is BrO3 minus for bromate. Our math help, we add up to negative one. Who do we start with? Well, oxygen. Oxygen's minus two. And there are three of them, so that's a minus six. That means bromine has to be plus five, doesn't it? Dichromate. We add up to negative two. Well, who do we start with? We start with oxygen. Oxygen's minus two, and there are seven of them. So that is a minus fourteen. So underneath chromium it has to be a plus twelve, doesn't it? And since there's two chromiums, that means we are plus six. That's chromium six in dichromate. Now, how would you name E? If I looked at E, how would I name it? I would name it, it's iron and it's oxygen, so it's iron oxide, but I have to figure out the charge. Well, it's iron 3 oxide. So we know it's already iron 3 oxide and oxygen is minus 2. Does that work for us? Well, minus 2 times 3 would be minus 6, plus 3 times 2 would be plus 6. So it still works. Okay? So it's new, but it's not new at the same time. So some of this, like with dichromate, it was good to work out. But iron 3 oxide, the naming is the same as the oxidation states. O2, what do we got here? Well, it's an element by itself. Zero, right? Because the math help has to be zero. Well, if the math help is zero, what equals zero? Zero equals zero. There we go. What about the monatomic ion here? It's plus three. Sodium hydride, math help, zero. Obviously, NaH is not okay in my Word Word document here. So, what do we start with? Who do we start with? Well, hydrogen. If you go down the list, it's an element by itself. No, monatomic ion. No, oxygen. Fluorine. No, oxygen. No, halogen. No, hydrogen. Hydrogen is plus one with non-metals. Sodium. I look at my periodic table, sodium is group one metal. So hydrogen is probably going to be my, uh, minus one, which means sodium would be plus one, and that works out.
because group one metals are always plus one. Calcium nitrate. Ooh, what do we got here? Well, at this point, I want to point something out. I can always take out NO3 minus and do it itself. Watch. If we do that, they add up to negative one. Oxygen is minus two. So that's minus six here. So it means plus five. Plus five. And I didn't write that in blue. Let me write that in blue for you. Plus five and minus six. Let's do it in the compound now. So we know oxygen is minus two. And we know calcium is plus two. Those are what we know for sure. So there's a plus two there. Two times three is six times two is a minus 12. That means plus 10 has to go into nitrogen. I got two of them, so each nitrogen is plus five. And so it's gonna work out just the same. So you, you can do it either way. If you need to pull the polyatomic ion out to do it, feel free to do so. How would you name J? I would name J nickel two oxide, wouldn't you? Plus two, minus two. Works out great. What about K? How would you name K? I would name it vanadium what oxide. Well, I know sulfate. Remember, sulfate is SO4 two minus. And I have two two minuses. So vanadium should be plus four. Right? Vanadium four sulfate. Oxygen is minus two. We know oxygen is going to be minus two. It can be minus two over here as well. And again, let's just do both just to show you. So it's a minus eight. So plus six. Plus four underneath vanadium because we know it's vanadium for sulfate. Eight and two is minus 16. So that would be a plus 12. And there's two of them. So we're at plus six. Works out great. OF2. Add up to zero. Oxygen is not who we start with. We start with fluorine's negative one. There's two of them, so oxygen is going to be plus two. Probably not a very stable compound because oxygen wants to be minus two. Okay, so the whole reason for doing that, all those oxidation states, is to figure out who changes? So I want to know if this is, you know, which of the following are oxidation reduction reactions. And then who's being oxidized, who's being reduced. So copper, silver, right? So I look, I got copper, and then I got copper 2 plus. So if copper changes its charge, chances that's a redox reaction. So chances are A is a redox reaction. Oxidation states, well, copper goes from zero to plus two. And silver goes from plus two, or plus one, excuse me, two plus ones to zero. Okay, what's what? Who's oxidized? Who's losing electron, electrons? Well, that would be copper. All right? The oxidation, whoever's oxidate, whoever oxidized is my reducing agent. Because that is the agent that causes the reduction to happen. Silver is reduced. It's also the oxidizing agent. Because without the silver there, copper would still have its electrons. Let's look at B. Well, instantly when we look at B, we should see HCl and recognize that's an acid. Just because there's an acid, though, doesn't mean it's a redox reaction. Or, and it doesn't mean that it's not a redox reaction. Because acids and metals, a lot of time, that acids react with metals, and a lot of time that's a redox reaction. Right, so if hydrochloric acid here was paired with zinc, for example, HCl, two of them, plus the zinc metal, you get zinc two chloride, zinc chloride, and hydrogen gas. That's a redox reaction. That one's redox. Now, I have an acid here, 
and I have a base. So chances are that's an acid-base reaction. If we do our oxidation states, H is plus 1, Cl is minus 1. N will be minus 3, H is plus 1. Oh, I put a plus down, sorry. Minus 3, plus 1, minus 1. Nobody changed. No one changed. Because in my math help, we have to 0. And I would start with hydrogens plus 1, so that's plus 4 because of non-metals. Chlorine is negative 1, so minus 3. Works out great. C. Well, let's do our oxidation numbers. Add up to zero. Okay. So aluminum is always plus three. That doesn't change. Oxygen is going to be so plus three, minus two. And there's four of them, so that's a minus eight. And hydrogen's got to be plus one. So that would be a plus four. Does that work out? Oh, I have a zero down. Excuse me. It's negative one. So three and four is seven. Yeah, it works. Plus three for aluminum doesn't change. Minus two for oxygen, right? Equals negative one. Minus four plus three, perfect. Water plus one plus one and minus two because it's plus two and minus two equals zero. No one changed. It's not a redox reaction. D. D. Let's see D here. All right, so I have silver nitrate. Well, if I look, silver is plus one here. And copper is zero. Here, copper is plus two. It's copper two nitrate and silver is zero. I want to highlight nitrate. Does nitrate change? No, this is a single replacement reaction, right? Copper is switching nitrate for silver. And so when I first learned these, by the way, I thought, oh, nitrate thinks copper is better looking than silver. And that's not what's really going on. The electrons are more stable on silver than they are copper, so they go from copper to silver. The byproduct of the electrons going to silver is that nitrate goes to copper. So this is a redox reaction. Who's oxidized? Who's reduced? Well, it looks like, here's my reduction. And it's also my ox agent. So silver is my ox agent. Silver nitrate is, oh, sorry. So silver nitrate is my agent. Silver gets reduced. By oxidation, well, too far. And it's also my um, reducing agent. The last one, what do we have? H plus is plus one. I have minus two, so that's a minus eight equals negative two plus six. Chromium is plus six. Minus two, minus two, seven minus 14 plus 12 plus six. Plus one and minus two. Not redox. Not redox. So that is the oxidation and reduction examples that we do. The rest of these we'll actually do in the next video, day 37. So I hope that works for you guys. Take care and we'll see you next time.